and get through as many own as we can because we've a huge number of queries in here already. But I might just ask you, have you, have you been away yourself for... I've go out and uh, gone, flown out to have a look. I've flown in a couple of the main routes and yeah. just to see. What's been interesting is the level of confusion and uncertainty at the beginning. A lot of uh, people very, very nervous about it. It's like a, the first flight again, Andre. We're all 11 years of age and, uh, you know, being held by the arm and going through... It's uh, about three weeks. You know, it must be f- nearly five weeks now, isn't it, since international... July 19. So yeah. what does that make it? It's, uh, it's it, Most of um, Europe move, was moving... Um, from mid June and July the first, they brought in the digital COVID, COVID cert. So when we arrived in numbers in airports like Faro and Malaga, like the choice routes that we do for summer, uh, they were pretty much used to it. Uh, airline check-in staff, um, mostly most of the check-in action since we we go straight to the gate now is at the gate. They were very uh, pretty much on top of it from the beginning. Flight again, Andre. We're all eleven years of age, and uh, you know, being held by the arm and going through. It's about take... three weeks. You know, it must be f- nearly five weeks now, isn't it? Since international July nineteen. So yeah. what does that make it? It's uh, it's it, most of um, Europe move was moving uh, from mid June and July the first. They brought in the digital COVID, COVID cert. So when we arrived in numbers in airports like Faro and Malaga, like the choice routes that we do for summer uh, they were pretty much used to it uh, airline check-in staff um, mostly most of the check-in action since we we go straight to the gate now is at the gate they were very uh, pretty much on top of it from the beginning passengers very nervous uh, so huge amounts of documentation people with loads of printed out forms because of that fear that they wouldn't get through and at the other side then um, you know the immigration stuff it was Mm. pretty much a new game for a lot of them but they were pretty used to it by the time Ireland arrived at the party and even in the weeks since we've seen things uh, okay. improve, efficiencies improve all over the place. Yeah, we've lots of people, as I mentioned, Owen, looking to um, get answers to questions. That's why you're here with us today. Uh, Lise is on the line. Um, you want to know if your digital cert name, or Liz, I should say, apologies, has to be the same as your passport. Is that right, Liz? Yes, it is. Yes. My GP knows me as Liz, but my passport says Elizabeth. And uh, I've heard queries on the radio about misspellings, and I just wondered... Um, if the certificate has to have the same name as your passport. Yes. Um, the airline staff are policing it for at their level. So, it, you know, before you reach the place that it counts, which is at the immigration, the airline staff at the gate are going to be looking for anything that's going to be uh, put, put back in their face. That includes uh, names and misspellings and, you know, this Irish thing of people called Mm. Margaret uh, being called Peggy. Uh, All the things that we saw go wrong when, um, for instance, Ryanair became very strict uh, on their naming policy. Now, on the ground, people, it has been uh, feedback on it is that they're very helpful. And yeah. there are loads of there are loads of other things going wrong with, you know, there is a sort of a, a process for a GP when you've got your uh, certificate from the GP. They are will work to help you, but I would advise very strongly that the name of the digital COVID cert matches exactly your passport. So if you got the digital cert from your GP or the vaccination centre, you need to contact this digital helpline to get that changed. Once, yeah. once, when they will have, they'll be able to track everything. They've all okay. the information in front of them. And once they can verify that you're not, that you're actually the person that got the vaccination, you really need to get it reissued. Now, people are getting through, but I'm not going to be in a to say that uh, you're going to be let on an aircraft if there's any discrepancy, because they are mm. looking for discrepancies. Ah, in, yeah, fair, yeah. And that's, and that's Fair enough, I suppose, too. It depends who you get. I hope that helps, Liz. Well, yes, but I tell you, I was given a portal to go online and I went online and I changed the name from Liz to Elizabeth. Okay. And I went, that's all I needed to change. And at the end of the page, it said submit, which I clicked on. But then that page came up again and I submitted that and I did it about four times before I finally gave up. So I don't know whether okay. it's actually gone through or not. It's, it's, uh, there are breakdowns in the system all over the place. Helpline is the best way to do it. Now, there are uh, ways of getting through by messaging and by tweeting directly to them. But the helpline, uh, it's a problem getting through. But once you get through, they're yeah, hugely just efficient. Keep, keep at it. Liz, I hope that helps. Thanks a million for getting in touch with us. It's 1890 is the number. If you have a question for Own Carry and you'd like to ask him here on air on Lunchtime Live today, Eileen is on line two. Eileen, what's your question? 
Uh, hi, um, I am travelling to Portugal um, next week with a 12-year-old, and I'm just wondering, um, it doesn't really specify whether it's over 12 or under 12 that need the PCR test. It's up to, up to the age of 12. My understanding is that once you hit the 12th birthday, you need uh, the test and it's an antigen test will suffice for Portugal. Um, I oh. will qualify my remarks saying that it could be under the age of 13, but my understanding is once you hit the 12th birthday, it's uh, something that we probably chase down for you and find out, is it, is it, does 12 mean 12 or does 12 mean 13? My understanding is it means 12. Is oh, that perfect. Okay, so safer, best, best to be safe than sorry. The antigen test can be done at the airport and it's not a quest question that you have to do it the day before. You will get your result back in about 20 minutes from it. So it's a lot uh, more convenient. It's cheaper, but the convenience is what counts than the PCR test. That's brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Eileen, for getting in touch with us. I have a text in here from a listener as well, Owen, who um, I heard the minute the comments from the Prime Minister in New Zealand today talking about the planned phased border reopening next year. Family living in New Zealand. Should I start looking at booking flights now? It's going to take a long time to clear the backlog for both Australia and New Zealand. There are huge numbers of Australians stranded abroad and uh, the uh, flights have been curtailed to both countries. I think even if they open, let's say uh, the dates of February or March have been thrown about by both countries, it is going to take probably six months before we see uh, people being able to move and this is really important at the prices that matter mm. because people are paying twelve and fourteen thousand for flights to uh, one-way flights at the moment because of the caps. Twelve and fourteen thousand. Yeah, absolutely, uh, because there's a cap on each of the uh, on New Zealand and on the Australian air, airports to get in. Never mind the mandatory quarantine you do when you get there. A lot of the people who are trying to get back have to buy business class tickets or could be very highly priced mm. tickets. I think it's probably going to take a lot of. 2022 to clear the backlog to New Zealand. Uh, hopefully they can get through it quicker and that certainly the airlines, Alan Joyce who's from Tala he's CEO of Qantas, he's certainly uh, ready to move people in mass and mass once he gets okay. to go ahead to do so but I do think it'll take a while to clear the backlog. Okay, Dara is with us as well on the line. Dara, what's your question for Owen? Afternoon. <clears throat> um, I hope to travel to Greece alone uh, in November because of the scarcity of flights that time of year. There are no direct flights from Dublin. So the plan is to go via Istanbul. I'm just wondering if there are any potential, as things stand now, are there any potential banana skins for transiting through Turkey, given uh, everything going on with COVID? I have, I'm fully vaccinated and I have my uh, COVID passport. Okay. There is a banana skin in that uh, the regulations and everything we've seen applies within the European Union. Turkey has applied to the European Union to get uh, the same status as a European Union country. They're recognising EU COVID certificates going into Turkey. If you're holidaying there on the return, though, they're not recognised uh, for the same uh, seem the same ha uh, travel without quarantine and without restrictions. So there are. Um, I'm Turkish Airlines is a great airline, and getting into Cyprus, uh, getting into uh, Greece uh, through Istanbul makes sense. But uh, I do expect things to have improved by November. But do be aware for everyone, not just uh, people transiting through Istanbul, mm. but through our other mm -hmm. major hubs out there, Qatar, uh, that the Olympic athletes came from, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all of those. Um, they're not so they're not they don't have the same uh, unrestricted travel for vaccinated passengers as EU countries have. The regulations came in July the 19th. Uh, are only applied to the European Union and Turkey, and as is Morocco, another famous uh, favourite holiday destination, yeah. are outside. They're recognising the European Union COVID certs. Uh, there's all sorts of political issues in the other okay. direction, including the vaccination that's administered. I hope that helps, Dara. But even if I'm just transiting, I wouldn't be leaving the airport. One of the big shocks for me and for everyone in the travel industry is that transit passengers were regarded the same as okay. uh, passengers emanating from a country. We saw that happen with mandatory hotel quarantine. It's a uh, treat a transit airport as if you're coming from that country. Things should have solved for November if I was you at play for time. OK, good stuff, Dara. Thanks a million for getting in touch yeah, with us here thanks, on, on the programme. Yeah, 1890 453 106 is the number if you have a question for Own Carrie here on Lunchtime Live today. Uh, Donna is with us as well. Donna, what would you like to ask Own? How are you doing, Owen? Um, my Hi, wife um, is actually trading. She's travelling home for the first time in two years, obviously, to Gothenburg. 
but she's flying directly from Ryan uh, from Dublin Ryanair. She's got the COVID cert and whatever. But when you go onto the Ryanair um, website, it directs you to a form, which obviously has to be filled in, and every single country is there that Ryanair fly into, except Sweden. <laughs> So I don't know whether Sweden doesn't need one of these forms that you fill in. It, oh. I know it's a little bit laid back, but I can't find any information. Swedish okay. Embassy, Dublin, I can't anything. So my, that's my question. My instinct, and it's not my... Uh, uh, I don't know the detail. My instinct is uh, that if Sweden needs a locator form that you have to fill out in advance. Mm -hmm. Um, it will be found through the Swedish government websites if it's not on the, the Ryanair. And if you can't find it, go to the airline of the country, go to Scandinavian. They will tell you mm -hmm. in their information straight away, even though you're not flying with them, they will tell you straight away what the Swedish policy on locator forms are. Locator forms are the biggest, one of the biggest issues here uh, that have arisen in the last few weeks because they all, in every country needs, uh, it requires one. And some of them are a little bit messy and a little bit difficult. Very often they're drawn up by bureaucrats for bureaucrats, not for holidaymakers. An example mm -hmm. that a lot of Irish people come across, not specific to you, Donna, but is the Spanish one. It actually looks for details of the address and the municipality, which, um, you know, if you're not familiar with Spanish local government, you might not know. And it doesn't allow you to go to the next page unless you've actually given that information, something I'd love oh, the Spanish to sort out. But it, it, locator forms, they're generally taking three, four minutes to, to fill. Some countries a bit more complicated, 10, 12 minutes. And in many ways, and this is not just for you, Donna, but for the general listenership, the locator form in some cases supersedes the digital COVID cert because it looks for your digital COVID cert QR code and then that's the QR code they look for when you land. That's very important in the case of our two major tourist destinations, Spain and Portugal, back to Sweden. Very surprised if they didn't have a locator form. Chase the Swedish government uh, websites. Government websites are notoriously difficult to find what you're looking for. If you can't find mm -hmm. it there, go to Ryanair's rival. Don't tell them this. Uh, go to Ryanair's rival, Scandinavian, SAS. They will certainly guide mm -hmm. you right into what is required for Sweden. Yeah, and I, I hope you've got some a bit of comfort, Donna, from that. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, it was because she, she's travelling on her own, which she hasn't really done either for a long time. And it's just, you know... I Everyone's know, and it can be worrying, so absolutely, yeah, yeah. 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 No, locator form is vital, very, it's very, very important. Yes, it's, it's I, I think yeah. yeah. Donna, thanks so. a million for getting in touch with us right, here so on Lunchtime Hi, Live. Donna. Cheers. Actually, just on that as well, Carol got in contact on to say um, the passenger locator forms, can they be yeah. filled out prior to leaving? Is there a paper alternative? Um, generally, uh, they are online. Uh, the people in the airports that you land uh, like them online. There's a lot of places that you can actually print them out and have them in paper form and they are being accepted in paper form. And just on that, a texter wondering about travelling to Spain but going to two different places in Spain during the three-week holiday. Do you... First location. Put in just your, first location. Yeah, put in your okay. address from the first location. Paul in Dublin, I'm heading to Marbella on the 23rd of December, double vaxxed. Do I have to have a PCR test to get back into Ireland? Uh, not from Spain if you're double vaxxed and you have your European co uh, digital COVID cert. 1890 is the number if you want to contact us here or to get in touch or any questions for Owen. Uh, Irene is in Galway as well. Irene says, Owen, I finally managed to get tickets to Bruce Springsteen in New York for the 1st of September after trying to trying for years to get tickets for his uh, small New York concerts. Is there any chance the US government will let the two West of Ireland fans in? <laughs> Collectively, we're dancing in the dark about this. <laughs> we have got an indication that they would lift it in July and then if there was a definite no and it's the European the health advice coming to them about Europe in general now there are other countries that have don't have the health advisory that have higher case rates than Europe but the lobbying is going on I do expect it to change in September will it be uh, in time to get you to Bruce Springsteen I'm not sure here's the here's a thought though if you um, it would you know if you go and isolate in a country that doesn't require the 14-day isolation um, flying into the United States. If you go to another country, do your 14-day isolation there and then fly in, not required because you haven't been in Ireland in the previous 14 days. But the real problem is we're running out of time in that for a September the 1st uh, concert. And even for Bruce Springsteen, that's a very convoluted way to go to a concert. <laughs> um, Ambrose is with us too on the line here at Lunchtime Live. Ambrose, what's your own question for 
Hello, um, uh, we're heading to we're heading to Portugal and we're living in Donegal, but we're going to fly from Belfast. I just want to know: uh, Are there any problems with that route going there or coming back? We both have our COVID there. Because the UK have different rules, don't they? Lots of problems. Um, we have one of the airlines flying out of Belfast, uh, EasyJet. Uh, have denied boarding for a lot of people, for some people, because of the European Digital uh, Covid cert. That was happening about 10 days ago, two weeks ago. Huge, a lot of huge efforts to try and get that solved. Uh, There's no reason why they should be denied boarding. And the fact is that Ryanair, who largely fly from Belfast City Airport, as opposed to EasyJet, who fly from Belfast International, have been letting people through on the European Digital Covid cert. Uh, Belfast is a complicated place. It's even more complicated since Brexit. And the um, rules, the EasyJet people would say, and they're right, the rules apply not to the place you've driven from, the country you've come from, but from the originating airport. That's how it, it's structured right, right through Europe. It would be really worth uh, getting some sort of confirmation from EasyJet in writing so that you, somebody up the line in EasyJet has made a decision, it's, you, it's okay for you to travel, so that the young person at the gate, uh, who is really only in the business of processing 180 passengers and getting them on the aircraft, doesn't yeah. have a question to answer. That would be probably the best way to do it. How are you going to contact them? Direct tweet to them is the best way of getting okay. a response from EasyJet. What are, you, what are you going to do, That's Ambrose? Thanks very much. Uh, I'll, I'll direct tweet. Direct <laughs> so tweet. We are going and yeah, and we are going with EasyJet. So uh, yeah, I think that's the way we'll do it. Good stuff. And not everyone has been denied boarding, but a few people have. It's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gary is with us as well on the line. Um, I'm, Owen is all yours, Gary. I'm all yours, Gary. <laughs> hey, thank, thanks, Andrea. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Owen. And just, it's a really quick question regarding passport validity. Um, I'm due to fly uh, on a week break to Malaga Airport in Spain on the 10th of September coming. However, my passport is out of date the 10th of October coming. And according to the Department of Foreign Affairs website, it's an EU flight, so it should be okay. But I just kind of would like a, an extra view on it. Very good question, very important. You're okay, it's in the EU. Watch out for countries that require uh, six months before your expiry. Turkey is one of them, we just mentioned it. Uh, it does rise to haunt people, but within the European Union, you will be okay. Oh, brilliant. Thanks so much, John. Thanks, Andrea. Listen, enjoy the holiday, enjoy Gary. The Thanks holiday. a million for getting in touch with us. You know, I only got my own um, digital cert there yesterday morning and all this talk of holidays <laughs> is, ma- is making me want to consider it. Own. Uh, this listener has got in touch to say, uh, my daughter is currently in holidays in Spain and has contracted COVID due to return home right. at the weekend. What's the story? Um, you can't fly. You're, um, you're not going to be able to travel if you've... Uh, suffering currently suffering from COVID you're a lot of the um, travel insurance people have now um, got policies that enable you to um, that will cover the expenses and the costs of um, okay. you know a delayed flight or a cancelled flight and the conditions for a lot of the airlines are quite uh, they're quite generous when it comes to situations like this can't talk about an individual case on this but certainly, if you got COVID in Spain, you got to get through um, the the treatment over there. The EHIC card will cover you, and the uh, you're not going to be getting on board an aircraft until you're clear. No, and but do you you have to pay up though for your own um, isolation accommodation? Um, up I'm front, not, I, I'm not sure uh, what the uh, Spanish uh, regulations on isolation when you're treated for COVID over there. Um, but certainly, um, the, the you know you you're not you're not returning. So all those expenses, uh, usually there, there are there it it doesn't it isn't part of your general travel insurance policy. But I noticed uh, from the very early day, stages of the crisis, Andrea, all the travel insurance companies backed off COVID. A lot of them have put in COVID policies now okay. that if you contracted abroad. But certainly you're not flying, and obviously the uh, EH, uh, EHIC card will cover you from the medical side. All the other things are a bit more complicated. Oh, and we could do another hour with you very easily here. There's very so many to do, questions. Andy. Tell Sean and... McCreef to go home. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> take another day off. And He'd be delighted to hear that. Do any work anyway, so. <laughs> He'd be delighted to hear that. But he is going to be in now in a few moments' time. Listen, the editor of Air and Travel Magazine, Owen Curry, thanks a million for joining us here on Lunchtime. Always a pleasure, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely.